changes in the FC25 EVOs that's come out in the last 24 hours uh, that will potentially make some insanely game-breaking EVOs very early on and could actually be quite bad for the game later game. On top of that, we'll also be talking about all the brand new players in Team Weeks and any new information that has come out in the last 24 hours. So, without further ado, let's go and talk about what is this massive information. So yesterday, we, um, if you guys missed yesterday's video, we did go and talk about the brand new Evo that's coming out. And I'll talk to uh, the brand new Evo coming out as well. If you guys are interested, uh, from today onwards, I'm actually on my brand new stream schedule, uh, where I'll be streaming 10 and a half hours every single day um, for probably the first month or two of FIFA. And then obviously I'll probably have to lay off the, uh, the 10 and a half hours a day. But I'll be streaming between 8 a.m. BST all the way through to half six BST. So obviously covering all your trading uh, and, you know, 6 p.m. content. In the pre-EAFC25 streams where we talk pricing up your guys' teams, any of your teams haven't priced up, come and uh, hit me up. We'll talk about any of the EVOs, we'll talk about trading, and uh, yeah, just answering any sort of questions. We'll also be trying to learn as much about player roles in the next 24 hours, so if you guys are interested in a video about player roles, I can release that tomorrow, because as I say, I'll literally be shooting for 10 hours today, trying to get my head around understanding as much as possible, and the market impacts it's going to have. But enough about that we're going to talk about the market impacts and um yeah just about this new information so yes we've got this brand new evo that is basically there to introduce us to the new boost system because ea again has already implemented a new system and that's that you can basically put someone into an evo even if they surpass the stats so for example the evo that's come out will let you have a maximum of 87 dribbling so you could go and use someone like Gabriel Jesus and even though he's got himself over 88 dribbling what he would end up getting is just the shooting boost so instead of getting 88 dribbling because again they're only letting you have a maximum of 87 dribbling he'll just go and get the plus three shooting but the new revelation is apparently there's even more to this and again it does sound quite game breaking and that is that again so maybe he released this and then he released the Q&A on it and he said that, what is it? He said that what happens if my player has one stat more than the upgrade? Uh, the points for that upgrade will go to the next available upgrade if he didn't reach the limit. And I'll be honest with you, I found this very hard to believe that this is even going to be a thing. But this is literally one of the most credible leakers out there. So unless he's got his facts wrong, this is like insane. So they're basically saying that, you know, instead of it only be, I thought it would be a case of, you know, he's maxed out the dribbling, so he'll only go and get the plus three shooting rather than the plus three shooting and the plus two dribbling. What he's actually saying is he's saying instead of him only getting plus three shooting, because he surpasses the maximum of 87 dribbling, those stats from dribbling are going to go to shooting, which means basically now you have the opportunity of having plus three shooting or plus two dribbling if the dribbling's lower, or pick someone with really high dribbling and you get a plus five shooting. So it, it kind of allows you to have some really, really insane upgrades. And it's, you know, in the end of the day, he did um, he did say that, you know, I guess, you won't, you know, that you can only hit the maximum shooting and only hit the maximum dribbling. So this can only be exploited to an extent. Because, for example, like Correa, Correa gets very, very close. Well, Correa maxes out both the shooting and dribbling, which means that there's no kind of nowhere for those stats to overflow. Um, but it just seems pretty insane because let's say I had really high pace really high dribbling but the shooting's low well then basically again we're just going to give me a plus five shooting and again the ea's got to be very careful with this in my opinion because whatever they set the maximums to is basically what people will be able to find they'll be able to find cards they'll be able to find combos of evos that allow you to get to the maximum so again what i mean by this is that the maximum for this evo is uh, 87 dribbling and 86 shooting um and, you know, because you can have stats overflowing, you're going to have people being able to hit these. I mean, the Correa himself ends up with 87 dribbling and 86 shooting. But, you know, if they don't moderate this and if they don't keep on top of this well enough, you are just going to end up with some absolutely insane cards. But what EA is really going to do this year is, again, kind of lower these limits. So we, we've kind of used this logic and we've, we've kind of found some players that, you know, if we are going to be able to get ourselves more shooting because the dribbling overdoes it, you know, what sort of cards can we end up with? Well, the first one is Gabriel Jesus. Gabriel Jesus, because he's got 88 dribbling and the max dribbling is 87, he gets plus five shooting instead. Meaning, uh, yeah, he ends up with a really nice card. Obviously, he's kind of losing out a little bit on the uh, pace, but, you know, ends up with a really nice shooting and really nice dribbling. I don't believe that the five-star... Sorry, you get plus one skills up to four-star skills. 
So again, he kind of maxes out the skills. They It doesn't let you upgrade it to five star skills. I don't believe that goes to a plus one weak foot because there's nothing to do with weak foots in the upgrade. But I believe that, I guess, if it gave you plus two skills and plus one weak foot, you know, maybe if you've maxed out the skills, they're not going to give you higher weak foot, which again just sounds insane. It sounds pretty game breaking. So I hope that this leaker is wrong with this information because I don't know. It's a lot of a lot of reliability on EA and a lot of responsibility, sorry, on EA to make sure that they moderate this well. Because otherwise, I think you're going to end up with the case of, you know, people having 99 stats in certain places because their, um, you know, other stats surpass other places. So yeah, Lookman is another one of these because again, you can only have a maximum of 87 dribbling instead of getting plus two dribbling and plus three shooting. He's only going to get a plus one on the dribbling and plus four shooting. Meaning Lookman ends up with a card with 84 pace. Uh, 85 shooting and 87 dribbling, which is uh, quite quite nice. And I believe, yeah, I say that runs out because Correa actually maxes out both stats, which means he can't really over, you know, he can't really utilize the uh, overflow. But what's quite interesting about this is it means there's actually some really interesting Evo combos uh, that we, you know, hopefully we'll see. Also, Bailey's another one of them because again, he's got 86 dribbling. He only gets plus one dribbling, but he does get his plus four shooting. So, I mean, if he wasn't a peg leg with two star weak foot, this card would be brilliant. It'd be 90 pace, 82 shooting, and 87 dribbling. The only worry is he's a peg leg. And personally, whenever I play FIFA, I do not keep on top of which is their strong foot in game, being too aware of their strong foot. So, for me, it'd be useless. You know, I need a minimum four star weak foot. So, yeah, basically, what I was doing is I was just sorting the players via dribbling and seeing who overdone it. Now, Sadly, it's not really the case with shooting. So just like if your dribbling is too high, you'll get higher shooting. Because it's a maximum 86 shooting, I mean, if we go and look at the players with really high shooting, you know, you could go with Bethany England, and then instead of her getting a plus two dribbling, she'd get a plus three dribbling or plus four dribbling. But, the, you know, the players with very high shooting aren't very desirable. The only one with really high shooting is Correa, and, you know, he's maxing out anywhere. So there's no real way of abusing the you know, players having really high shooting, but there is a slight way of abusing players having really high dribbling, such as uh, Gabriel Jesus. So this had me thinking, you know, if we can get ourselves some really interesting, uh, really interesting sort of ways of abusing this new Evo mechanic, what does that do for linking up the first Evo with the second Evo? So if you guys don't know, we know the second Evo that comes out a little bit later than we expected, uh, and that's the pre-order bonus, or not pre-order bonus, the ultimate edition bonus of this one right here which is an evolution that allows you to select an 82 rated or lower striker and improve their overall rating so just a general upgrade plus giving them power power shot plus because there are some like insane cards that we can potentially make now we don't actually know what rating boost this gives but because it's a entry evo like a starter evo we can probably compare it to last year's starter evo of welcome to evolutions and what Welcome to Evolutions did is it took players from an 80 rated to an 81 rated. It didn't give them too high of an upgrade, which is why it's quite comparable. You know, it gave them a plus one everywhere. Whereas I guess this time it gives, what, a plus five in total, plus one star strong, uh, one star weak. So maybe maybe it becomes a plus two. And if it does become plus two, it does null a few of the players I'm, uh, I'm about to go and show you. But it creates really, really nice combos for Adeyemi. Really nice combinations for Marcus Rashford. And really nice combinations for Timo Werner. And I'll tell you what, if it does, if the um, this starter Evo, which again is leaked, does give a plus two, Timo Werner is still going to work one way or the other. It just comes down to other things. Because obviously for the first Evo, they're letting you go for a case of, you know, you can have this maximum rating, we'll still let you put a player in, even if they've got higher dribbling or higher shooting or so on. But it really depends on this one or the, uh, this one here, the uh, attacker one, it depends if they have the same sort of thing there. Because if they got the same sort of thing there, again, the combo and Evos you'll be able to build is absolutely insane. I've, I've got a few mock-ups going off of what last year's upgrades were, but yeah, the, the upgrades are insane. But there's, but this is, um, sorry, they potentially allow you to do this because they're only upgrading two stats, right? They potentially let you have these limits because, you know, they're shooting or dribbling, and I say the overflow makes sense because if your shooting's too high, it can overflow into dribbling. If your dribbling's too high, it can overflow into shooting. But the question I'd have is, what if it increases shooting, dribbling, you know, pace and physical? You know, if you've got too high shooting, other stats can overflow into physical. Are they going to overflow into, you know, dr defending? We don't actually really know, and that's why I don't know if this concept really makes sense. Uh, because if there's multiple stats that can be upgraded, and again, you've surpassed a limit on one. 
where are those other stats going to fall? Are they just going to fall to the next one in the row? Are they going to... And it seems like there'll be some super complex... And I'll be honest with you, EA just kind of complicating the system because, you know, really go to the next stat on the card and as a result, there's more incentive to always overflow your physical because it'll give you more pace and, you know, again, it could just end up getting really, really complex. So... We don't know if these stat limits are going to be for every EVO. Uh, we don't know if this overflow is going to be for every EVO because, again, it does make it a bit complicated. But if we're presuming that they're going to allow stat limits um, going into the combos, again, they just get insane because last year the upgrade was really, really nice. It was max two overall, max three pace, max three shooting, max three dribbling, max three physical, and max one weak foot. And if you go and combo that with max sorry, plus three shooting, plus one dribbling. You're ending up with plus five shooting, plus four dribbling, plus one skill move. If we look at last year's one, they gave plus one weak foot as well, and you're getting a playstyle plus. It's just quite hard to believe that they would either, one, the uh, the, four, the strike Evo would be this good, or two, they don't go and revert back to the you, the maximum pace you can have, the maximum dribbling, the maximum physical. Because again, even if they go and do this, you're just going to end up with players that have really high stuff on here. And they're just going to end up with like crazy fit. Like they'll just end up with two or three crazy stats. Like it's some sort of ultimate screen card from years ago. So that's kind of like the worry is how lenient and how much this overflow mechanic kind of goes into Evos. Because otherwise you can end up with some insane cards. So I've built a mock-up of players that fit into this Evo. And then presuming that the forward Evo is like this. Because so far the forward Evo does seem to be a bit like this. It's letting you use a maximum of 82 ra rated strikers. Last year you let you use a maximum of 83 rated strikers. Uh, I can't remember if it gave you a playstyle plus last year. But it did give you one star weak foot. So the players that I've mocked up going off of the, both the upgrades are again absolutely insane. So now if we have Adeyemi, right? If they let you go in and use a playstyle, Adeyemi is one of the only 82 rated or lower rated strikers who already has a playstyle plus of quick step. Meaning if they don't go for a maximum one playstyle plus, because if I'm not wrong, in this Evo here, they didn't have maximum playstyle one because it was 83 rated players. And I don't think any low rated players last year had playstyle pluses. Whereas this year, obviously, or if they did have a playstyle plus, they probably would have surpassed one of these limits, which again is why yeah, it needs to be very careful. Um, but yeah, we go back to this Adeyemi card and it'd end up being insane. He'd end up having 99 pace because he'd get that pace boost from the shooting Evo. Uh, sorry, from the forward Evo. He'd obviously end up getting power shot from the forward Evo. He'd end up getting a plus one star weak foot, which means he'd end up being four star skills, five star weak foot. Now don't get me wrong, he's a bit of a glass cannon with very low shooting and passing, but this would be an exceptionally well demanded card. The problem with this, by the way, is Adeyemi is actually favouring for a team of the week. I think he got like two assists and a goal. So there is the chance you could build a card like that, but the goal card might not even be in packs, meaning you know you couldn't even go and build it. But yeah, this would be an insane card if the limits are very broad. They also might use a mixture of last year's and this year's way of doing Evos. And last year's way of doing Evos was maximum ratings, maximum playstyle pluses. They might allow you to have a bit of... Um, you know, a bit of leeway, but they might say, we already know the maximum rating is 82, but they also might say maximum playstyle plus is 1. And as a result, there being maximum playstyle plus is 1, you wouldn't go, you wouldn't be able to go and put in Adeyemi, and you wouldn't be able to put in Rashford, because Rashford's got power shot plus. So these two cards would be null and void. But here's Rashford, who again can potentially fit both Evos, because his base card is an 81. You put him into that stat upgrade, that'd only take him to an 82, and then he's going to fit the next one, and he'd end up with an insane card from week 1 of FIFA with 92 pace, 89 shooting, 87 dribbling, 5 star skills, 4 star weak foot, power shot plus, which again is why it'd be very hard to believe that EA wouldn't limit, because if we're going off the presumption that the Ultimate Edition Evo is the same as the um, you know the first Evo, these cards are going to end up being insane. Now it might be that again the first Evo we get is you know it's, it's a plus 2 rating, which means that Rashford wouldn't fit, uh, Adeyemi would still fit, and also Timo Werner would fit. Now Timo Werner would also have to be power, power shot plus, but, um, yeah, he'd end up with this card. Four-star skills, five-star weak foot, because, of course, he's going to get the one-star skill move boost on the um, on the first Evo, and then he'd get the one-star, potentially, weak foot boost on the second Evo. So he ends up with an insane card with 94 pace, 95 shooting. The problem with these cards is the passing is very low and 85 dribbling. So, again, we'd end up with an absolutely insane card, and this is just players who fit the first two Evo. But... Like I say, you know, it's, it's hard to believe they'd allow the overflow mechanic uh, and then they'd allow something like this. But, you know, we'll have to see. We'll have to see. If the overflow mechanic is a thing, the breadth of amount of players you can use in these Evos is going to be insane. 
which again isn't so good for trading because it means there's less concentration of people doing the you know less concentration of everyone doing the same players if everyone's doing the same players they're great to trade with because they keep going up and up and up whereas if everyone's using different players it's not so good for trading but i think again for you guys as users i think it's really nice that you can use whoever you know if you want to use these silvers and bronzes and get them up to everything and they can practically fit every evo if they're doing these sort of overflow again the only thing that was limiting last on the first evo is the rating and then i start doing maximum rating 82 maximum play styles one play style plus is one which again would only allow you to do the burner but still even with that burner it would be an insane card and of course they might go in null v evo in comparison to last year's so i think that's going to go and wrap up what we have so far talking about the evo what we're going to go and talk about right now is we are going to talk about the new team of the week actually no we're going to talk a little bit about playstyle pluses uh, like i said i'll be streaming for 10 hours today i'm going to do a lot of research into playstyle pluses because i do think it can be very influential on next year's prices so uh, yeah tomorrow's video might be me talking about playstyle pluses how i think it'll affect the market uh, kind of explaining it to you guys because again i saw them tweet this and then there's a lot of people who just don't really understand what playstyle pluses are so i guess it's you know i've got the time to research so i might as well do the research from what i understand at the moment it's just player instructions but now it's a way of selling cars to be worth more. That's uh, that's from what I understand. So now we're going to talk about is we are going to talk about Team of the Week. Now, if you guys don't know, Team of the Week uh, players who will be in Team of Week 1 would have run from last Wednesday all the way through to, well, this evening's games. And, um, yeah, we talked about this in yesterday's video. So anyone we don't cover, any big names that we don't cover, they would have been in yesterday's video. So let's go and talk about the players who played on Sunday who could get a Team of the Week because there's some really nice players. First off, we start off with the London derby, and um, we've got ourselves Gabriel, who got himself a goal and a clean sheet, therefore favourite to go and get a team of the week. Would end up being a nice card, because we know that EA do buff uh, slow defenders quite nicely in team of the weeks. He's really got himself a playstyle plus as well, so you would end up being a nice card. I can see him probably subjective to the pace. The pace will dictate the price. You know, if he's got 72 pace, he's probably about 30, 40k. If he's got a 75 pace, he's probably getting up to about 50 to 70k. And if for some reason they're going up into 80 pace, this car's like 150, 200k. You know, he's an expensive card. And I do think his price will be completely determined on how much pace he has. And obviously they did, um, Hummel was really nice last year. They took him from 56 to 70 pace. So we can see they've done it. We now move on to Yamal, uh, a gold card that, you know, some people predict being very expensive, but he's just, this card looks quite abysmal, but luckily he's very, very good in real life. Uh, Barcelona beating Genoa 4-1. Uh, goal was coming all around the pitch, but Yamal, I believe, got a man match and he picked up two goal, two goals. Yeah, I mean, three-star weak foot, four-star skills. His base card is quite rubbish, so he needs quite a nice upgrade. He'll be hyped, so no matter what it is, he's he could be a rubbish card and he's probably still 20, 30k. But yeah, he needs a significant boost because I do think this card looks pretty bloody. Next card we're going to move on to is Athletic playing against Las Palamas. Uh, and Artura, you wouldn't believe it, is a Naki Williams. Uh, yeah, I'm not quite sure why uh, Nico Williams ended also getting man of the match, at least statistically, with him having three assists and one goal, but hey-ho. A Naki Williams with a team of the week would be absolutely insane. I can easily see him costing about 100 to 150k. Um, you know, he's going to end up with a nutty card. And it's a bit gutting as well, by the way, because this guy fits some of the starter Evos. So if you're telling me Adeyemi's out of packs because of how he played, I think it was on Saturday's game, and now you're telling me Naki Williams is out of packs, because their goal cards would never have been in packs because they go straight to team weeks, that's two of the best contenders for some of these starter Evos, both being out of packs, which is quite annoying, because they're both very likely to actually get team weeks. So, yeah, and Naki Williams. Next player we move on to is Lookman. Atlanta went and beat uh, Florentina 3-2. Goals can come from everywhere. Uh, Charles de Catalea got himself a goal and assist. Retigui got himself a goal, but Lookman got man of the match with uh, one goal and one assist. Again, they rate him uh, significantly higher. Again, another player who we want to use for the starter Evos, potentially getting a team of the week, which means you wouldn't be able to use his goal card for the starter Evos because it would never be in packs until next Wednesday. A bit annoying. He's probably got a lower chance than I'd say Adeyemi and um, Anaki Williams. But yeah, would be another really nice team of the week. I could imagine him easily costing about 30 to 50k. Um, you know, significant boost, playstyle plus. I don't think they will give playstyle pluses this early on in team of the weeks. But yeah, it could be a bit bit more than that. But I'd say about 30 to 50k for Lookman. Next player we're going to move on to is going to be Calgary versus Napoli. Napoli beating them 4-0. Team of the weeks could potentially come from Krava. Um, could potentially come from Bergadino. Uh, but more likely than not, it is going to come from Big Mike with uh, two assists and a goal. Not the most interesting card in the world, but again, probably would be about 30 to 50k team of the week. 
Uh, maybe a little bit cheap. Maybe he's like, you know, maybe he's 20, 30. Because his card isn't too insane in the end of the day. Um, unless there's some sort of meta shift. Now we're going to move on to the women's games. Women's games for the men's games. For those that are interested, I use who scored for the women's games. I use sofa score because who scored. I don't think covers the women's games. It's disgusting. Okay, what is it? Joey Barton's website. But yeah, yeah, we move on to the first one, and that's Hansen. Hansen actually played earlier in the week, um, but I'm not quite sure if you, she'll get a team week because I said this in previous videos that when you're 90 rated, EA wants to milk the living daylights out of you, giving you promo cards, which means normally they don't want to give you team of the weeks because team of the weeks don't sell as well as a Roy to the final would or a radioactive card would. Team of the weeks are always a little bit, you know, a bit underwhelming. So because the team of the weeks don't sell very well, EA normally kind of hold back on the high rated to get in team of the weeks. So Hansen went and played. Was it? She went and played in this game right here. Uh, she went and got herself man of the match, I guess statistically. She got herself two goals. Putella's got herself a goal, but as a penalty and again very high rated. So two goals for a 90 rated player is definitely not guaranteeing a team of the week. But yeah, if you haven't seen already, her car got a nice upgrade, five star skills, five star weak foot would be an insane team. Like her team of the week would probably be like 1.5 to maybe two million. Her base card is favoured to come out near a million. I think about seven eight hundred k. So um, yeah. She gets Team Week 1, that's a 1.5 million coin card. And we've already got Haaland who could potentially get a Team of the Week who'd end up being a million coin plus card. Um, I don't think there's anyone part of that, but two 1 million coin plus cards in Team Week 1 would be insane. Now moving on to the NWSL, uh, and I actually learned something with this uh, with this one. And that is that we had the game, where is, I believe it's San, yeah, San Diego. And the man of the match here was Carrasquinho. Now, she doesn't actually have a card in the database at the moment because she transferred from Olympic Lyon to um, the MLS. But yeah, she went and got herself, what was it, a goal and an assist. Now, it's actually hard for a woman to get a team week than men. Again, it's, it's awful. In the modern day, I wouldn't put, but yeah, because they count them as a minor league. Okay, it's disgusting. Uh, and because they count them as a minor league, it's a bit like in the championship. You could score a hat-trick in the championship and EA wouldn't know about it. It's a little bit like that for the women's cards. You know, you could score a hat-trick, you could score a brace. And if you're in the Prem, Serie A, Bundesliga, La Liga, you'd get a team of the week. But because they don't prioritise WSL cards, or sorry, women's cards, you know, a lower chance. But Cascarino's card again, we don't have one for uh, FC25. She didn't get any performance-based special cards, so she might get a downgrade. But yeah, with quick, quick step, 94 pace, she was a really good card last year. So it'd be interesting if she gets a team week this year. Uh, and the last game that we are moving on to is going to be ah, a man's game. And that is Lionel Messi. Lionel Messi got himself, I believe it was two goals and an assist in whatever game he had. I can easily see him getting a team week and I don't think he'd be very expensive. His base card is favourite to come in, I think it was around about 100, 150, 180k. Um, yeah, I think, I think actually it was 150, 180 last year. He's had a downgrade, so I think it was 100, 120 is what I quoted him at. Well, I think his team week is only probably about three to 400k. I don't think he's going to be very expensive unless he gets a significant pace boost. But um, yeah, Messi could also get a team week. So I mean, that along with Hansen and Haaland would just, you know, be an absolutely insane team the week. Again, they weren't very efficient investments team the weeks. We talked about in so many videos leading up to FIFA. Uh, 20k team the weeks were better to buy than 20k golds. Mid-range team the weeks, about 50 to 100k, were underperforming compared to investing in golds. Uh, but the top end ones that again were about 400k plus. So potentially Messi, Hansen. Harland outperformed gold cards, but they didn't outperform icons in terms of investment. Um, in terms of how cards performed, I have actually done a, um, a nice update to the uh, trading guide. Uh, so we do have a free trading guide running all the way through to the first week of uh, EAFC, so first week of October basically. Um, and I did go and redo all of this, and this is basically just a price sheet of what happens with the market for every sort of card, so cheap golds, me uh, mid golds, expensive golds, top golds, Cheap heroes, mid heroes, icons, bloody bloody blah. I did go and do this is fully updated now with uh, I say a lot of hours of research going into what happens with each individual card. So if you guys do want to go and check that out, there is a link in the top link in the bio. But there was obviously an ad for that at the beginning. But that has been that. Thank you very much for watching. Hopefully we'll have a bit more information. Not a crazy amount of information in the last 24 hours, but still some stuff to go and analyze and look into. So thank you very much for watching. We'll see you guys tomorrow with a brand new video.